Yale Swamp is Kenya's largest freshwater wetland, covering an area of 17,500 hectares. The wetland lies on the northern shore of Lake Victoria, cutting across Siyaya and Busia counties. The wetland supports the livelihoods of the surrounding community by providing ecosystem services such as food, fiber, and medicinal plants. This area is also an important bird area and a key biodiversity area. We have a lot of birds here. We find that those birds are suffering a greater deal. Birds like the Pythonus and others which used to be uh, there. So that diversion caused a lot of uh, damage. The wetland, however, faces many threats, including high population growth that has led to overexploitation of its natural resources. The water is highly uh, polluted during this time. Majorly, the fishermen have done a lot of uh, damage. The management of Yala wetland is also affected by the policies of the two counties under which it falls. Due to these challenges, different stakeholders from both the government and the conservation sector came up with a land use plan to mitigate these challenges. We have tried very much to see that uh, Yellow Swamp is conserved. And uh, the organization we are working with, the Nature Care, we came up with a document called Yellow. Uh, Land use plan. Land use plan, the purpose was to have a plan on how we can manage the, the swamp, mm. where everybody is, in, is involved. In this project, we use two participatory approaches to integrate voices of local stakeholders in assessing drivers of change and developing alternative future scenarios just to safeguard the ecosystem service delivery. The first approach was the Participatory Geographic Information Systems, the PGIS, used to determine how ecosystem service provision has changed spatially from independence to the present day and how drivers of change, such as land use change, climate change, and other factors have impacted the wetland. This system uses digital maps, satellite imagery, sketch maps, and others that integrate with the knowledge and information from the local community. This process is highly participatory and helps to engage people and create awareness through community empowerment. In this case, land use change is known to be an important driver of change in communities' access to resources and PGIS can help to demonstrate where these changes have taken place. The second approach was participatory scenario planning, PSP, where stakeholders frequently guided by researchers are engaged in a highly collaborative scenario development process to explore alternative futures under diverse scenarios. This study uses participatory scenario planning to explore future economic system delivery in the wetland. Scenario storylines were developed through workshops with stakeholders in September and November 2021, and the stakeholders were presented with the drivers of change and asked to develop plausible alternative storylines based on the key drivers. But first, there was a presentation of the goals of scenario exercise and scenario scoping. Then we had a stakeholder mapping to help us know who was present and who was missing in the workshop. This helped to understand how well stakeholders were represented in this exercise. The main direct drivers of change identified were number one, land use change, which include deforestation, land encroachment by investors and community, and burning of papyrus. The other is resource use, which includes illegal hunting, illegal fishing methods, such as using nets with the wrong mesh size and water abstraction. The third driver of change is pollution, which includes spraying of chemicals, dumping waste into yala and air pollution. 
The fourth one is environmental change, which include climate change, flooding and soil erosion. Governance was also identified as a driver of change by lack of land use policy, political interests, management conflicts and ignoring community views. After identifying the drivers of change, the workshop participants were asked to rank the drivers in order of importance and include any missing drivers. They considered the degree of importance and uncertainty in each driver. The participants were then split into four groups to create a scenario framework. In order to develop and test the actual scenarios, participants developed storylines based on each scenario. Each group was tasked to tackle one axis by naming the scenarios and discussing the impact of each scenario on the Yala wetland ecosystem. poor governance, with no public participation, will have lack of ownership in the projects by the community. Upon a conflict between the government and the community, we will have no meaningful development within the community. In poor governance, it is always clear that something is going wrong. Mm. But you will find that there is nothing you can do about it. Therefore, first thing you do, you will probably resort to violence as a way of gaining control over your natural resource. Mm -hmm. So your security is going to be very high. And also, in terms of food security, that will also be poor. Mm -hmm. The yield will be too low, whatever you decide to do with it. There are examples of sugarcane, wheat, rice, it won't be good. Instead of us relying on the usage of uh, communal based farming methodologies, we will actually gen it with modern and improved technological inventions as a way of optimizing our crop productivity. And after all that, there was a discussion on the policy option for management of the ecosystem under the diverse scenarios. Policy options to mitigate these scenarios. Nikimalizia. Iwapo tutafika mwaka wa elfu mbili sitini na tatu. Ndalau itabidi kwa muda kwa zasa hadi pale. Tutengeza serikali yeti kwe mzuri ama tutakuwa na uhusishaji wa jamii kwa serikali, community involvement. In terms of economic livelihoods, we shall also embrace agribusiness instead of relying on the traditional subsistence farming methodologies that hitherto has been put in use. Policies that can help change of governance structure. Governance may be transferred either to the national government or a parastatal. Public participation should be asked. As things are currently, community-based organizations are crucial when it comes to matters like this. We have so many things that uh, can bring more tourists to this place, which our government or county government has not opened their eyes despite our campaign. So to see protect, then to put me for tell that you can choose Na hii yo, wange kusaidia atuwe na kijo kimoja kwamba hiyo riva yala, hiyo ekiane ni chumeti kikitoria. Therefore, the, the, the yala ecosystem goes up to Winyala. And the Winyala, there are a lot of things going on right now in Busia. Winyala people are in Busia. Mm -hmm. uh, there are our members, there are activities there. There are our eyes on the other side of Kosame, Kosame Yala as well. So that is how we are working together with them, uh, with the Nature Kenya, with the help of Nature Kenya, with other organizations that are doing the related activities on conservation.